Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm checking out a 2022 Volkswagen Taos in the SEL trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 21550 Bridgestone tires wrapped around 18 inch alloy wheels with a gloss black finish. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Pure Gray. And it's very interesting. It's kind of like a, uh, like a battleship color or something like that. It's very unique. And it seems like it's one of those colors that when it's dirty, you can't really notice it as much, like a black, like a gloss black or whatever. But here in the front, it has a combination of chrome and matte black grill with some gloss black as well. So you can see that the gloss black kind of pops out a little bit from this color. And it does have some wheel well ventilations right in here. Some silver at the bottom, matte black here and here. And a lot of this is closed off. So there's a little bit of opening there, but some of it's closed off. Same thing here with this part. There's some parts here that are closed off and some are open. So you can see this part is closed and the other side is open a little bit. It has the chrome there as well. Now the Volkswagen emblem also serves as the adaptive radar cruise control system uh, sensor. So it kind of keeps, it uses radar to ping vehicles in front of you uh, to set the distance using the, um, using radar, which is pretty neat. It also has some very neat LED accent lighting right in here. And they kind of connect in with these lights here. And this is, uh, a lot of it's only visible at night, so you have to check out my night video to see what it looks like. Um, but the headlights are pretty interesting. It's an LED, uh, active bending LED system. And um, it, it, really good headlights. I'm very impressed with them. The bending portion is just a little gimmicky. It doesn't really need to be, ne it doesn't seem necessary. Uh, it's fine if they just don't move and I would still be ac adequate lighting and headlights. Looking at the side of the vehicle, well this color, sometimes a flat black kind of blends in a little bit. So around here, you can see it extends up around each wheel well and around the base of the vehicle is a flat black. Uh, so it kind of may not be able to tell with this particular color. Now the gloss black wheels, they look nice when they're clean, but they get dirty very easily. Uh, just a, It doesn't take much, just a few miles of driving and they start to get a pretty heavy layer of dust and stuff on them, especially depending on the weather, uh, makes a difference. But it's one of those things that you have to be willing to clean them regularly, otherwise they're gonna not look so hot. Now it has a Talos badging right here with some chrome, the upper portion of the side mirror, and the handles are body colored, uh, and the pillars here are a flat black. There's also a metallic roof rails there as well. This is what the key looks like, and it's a full proximity key system. It does have the lock, unlock, the ability to remote start the vehicle, and then unlock the trunk. Uh, the cargo area, the lift gate, basically has to be manually lifted up, so it's not like it's gonna lift it up or anything, but you do have the ability to unlock it. Now, if you have the key with you, it'll automatically unlock anyway. So this button is a little bit redundant. It has a panic button here. There's also a physical key on the inside of the, this key fob. Now this key fob is relatively light and easy to carry around with you. It's a lot better than the previous generation uh, key fobs. So I'm really liking this key, the weight, the size, the contour. It's very easy to kind of slip in your pocket or just carry it with you. So as long as you have the key with you, it could be in your pocket, in a bag. Uh, as long as it's on the outside of either one of, one of the front doors, you can lock or unlock the doors by pushing this button. So to lock it, first press, second press, unlock it. So it alternates. So when you lock it, you wanna make sure that you check the door to make sure that you actually locked it because there's no visually or audible way of telling whether you locked it or unlocked it. Uh, so now we locked it, push it again, unlock it. So you wanna test it if your intention is to lock it. Behind this cover is also a physical key location, so you can slide this off and then use that if, if the battery's dead or something. But So it's behind this cover. All the doors go all the way to the bottom of the vehicle. So this 
plastic right here is kind of intended to protect the, the paint from road debris and dirt and stuff. Um, but also, since it goes all the way to the bottom of the vehicle, it protects and covers up this threshold area. And there's actually a seal across the bottom there. Uh, so that way it keeps, you know, water and stuff and dirt from getting in this threshold area as little as possible anyway. So your clothes don't get dirty for, you know, sliding across this area when you're going in and out. So it gives, it makes this area more clean than otherwise it would be. Okay, so here's the inside of the passenger side door. So it's a combination of gray and black, the interior. Uh, it does have some occasional stitching here and there. So you can see the white stitching here. This is like a vinyl type material, soft touch, not super soft, but it is soft touch. This is an injection molding type, like a Nerf football, that kind of thing. Um, and then you have some hard plastics, the rest of the door down here. Now the armrest is slightly soft to the touch as well, and it's kind of like a vinyl type material. This is an enclosed area here, so you can utilize it as a handle to close the door. Uh, but also as a little pocket and then you have a little larger pocket there at the bottom and uh, and this is kind of like a gray color here it's a gloss plastic surface it has a seal plate here in the threshold with the Taos badging looking pretty cool uh, manually adjusted seats and they are a simulated leather material and it has a cl cloth, like a microfiber cloth here, to made up uh, and protect. So it, basically this is a more supple material than this material. So they have that down here to, where it mates up with the, uh, the hard plastics. Now these he are heated seats. There's perforations in the center. There's stitching. You can see there's different colors. There's gray and there's black. Pretty neat looking seats, and they're relatively comfortable as well. And the position is a good height off the ground, so getting in and out of the vehicle is just very easy. So it's just basically, you're not climbing up or climbing down to get in and out of the vehicle. And pretty good amount of legroom as well. Now this, this little hump right here, this is on the driver and passenger side. Uh, that kind of gets in the way sometimes when you have the seat all the way back. And there's a little bit of tapering going on here, but overall not too bad. And then there's a net pocket there on the passenger side of the console. Now this is a hard plastic, so you know, it will be, depending on what you put in there, you know, it may be an issue. It's not like it's cushioned or anything. Glove compartment is not lockable. And a smooth plastic on the inside. And there's some gray. So you have the light gray, the dark gray, and then the hard touch non-reflective dash here. This is that like a vinyl type material, but everything else is a hard plastic. No problems getting in and out of the front door. You can see this quite big opening. Plenty of headroom, it goes up quite a bit, and just overall, lots of space. Swing of the door is nice as well. The back door, the swing of the door could be a little bit more, uh, but it's still not bad, because you do have you know plenty of headroom here. There's a little bit of an angle to the back here and here, uh, but overall, getting in and out is not a big deal, getting into the back door. And the inside of the back door, very similar styling, uh, except for you have some more hard touch surfaces. This is the only soft touch and it's barely soft. So the back seat is very similar styling as the front. It has the different uh, perforations and the colors and stitching and all that stuff. It does have the Isofix car seat latches or latch system, whichever one you want to call it. There's 
cup holders and an armrest there in the center. There's also a pass-through in the center of the seat. And this lifts up. And you have more space there. On the back of both front seats, and look at the leg room. So the, the, thing, the, the thing about the leg room is that the seat is quite a bit off the floor. So that way your knees aren't sticking up in the air too much. Um, so that's a, that's a plus. And there's space underneath the front seat as well. Uh, on the back of both front seats, this is a soft material here. And then it is a, uh, like a little kangaroo pocket on the back of both seats. There is a USB-C charge port. Not a regular charge port. USB-C. So if you get this vehicle, you want to keep one of those in the vehicle just in case you know your passenger or whatever doesn't have that connection and a very shallow uh, pocket right there taking a look at the back of the vehicle starting here at the top it has these roof rails uh, that are metallic and it also has a gloss black shark fin antenna here and a little spoiler back here with the third brake light which is the LED it's in the top of the glass there is a rear wiper and LED tail lights which are really nice now the backup camera is slightly offset right there so Optically, it's not a huge deal, especially with this type of vehicle, um, but it just seems like it would be a little bit better if it was more integrated in, into the design of the vehicle in, in a higher position and in the very center. So it's, it's adequate for sure, but it's, um, you know, it could be improved, in my opinion. Now, it does have the parking sensors across the back, and they're integrated, interestingly, here, which is pretty normal. But for some reason, they're like, hey, let's just put one inside this reflector here. And that's kind of neat. You know, you'd think they'd be able to, you know, put it somewhere in the black part, like over there. But they just decided to put it there for some reason. Maybe there's a good reason. Now, these are intended, it looks like they're intended to look like exhaust tips or surrounds or something. But they're just... They're just for looks. There's, I mean, it doesn't go anywhere. So, and, and, and they're nice and chrome and shiny, trying to get your attention. And uh, to me, this right here would, like if I bought this vehicle, I would black these out to make them less noticeable because they look very tacky. Especially considering they're, they're obviously fake from a distance. So the actual exhaust is quite hidden, which you saw in the very beginning of the video. Okay, so opening this up, there's a button under here. So you can see the button is offset and the camera is offset. So you think they'd have at least something in the very middle. Uh, I would prefer the camera, but they try to wedge it into the same area there. It does have LED tag lights. So it's a hard plastic there on the underside of the lift gate. And there, you do have the ability to have a shade back here, but this particular one didn't have it. There's a hanger here. And there is a, not the best cargo light here. And you'll see this in the night video. It's, it's just a standard bulb on one side, not very bright. And it's just, you know, with, especially with black interior, it's not all that great. But the cargo area, the volume is actually pretty decent. Uh, it goes down uh, into the floor a little bit. And I mean, even without folding the seats down, it is a very usable space back here. It's really nice. Now, of course, it's a 60-40 split, and you can fold the seats down, adding to your cargo space. You can also fold down uh, just the 
uh, the center little pass through as well if you need to put like skis or whatever back here but the thing about it it is not level with the cargo area so it's a huge step there so you're you're you can add to your cargo space but it's not like you have this flat floor or anything now under the floor actually is your spare tire and tools um, and also a subwoofer for the beats sound system it has a locking fuel door and it's on the passenger side so you can make the passenger pump the gas for you and it's a fairly standard um, cap tether but it has this little post right here so when you take out the gas cap it has a little post on it and it goes right there and it keeps it completely out of the way while you're pumping gas and it's very secure in there as well and it won't allow you to shut the the door without putting the cap back on as long as you have the key inside the vehicle to start it up you just hold the brake and push this button right here here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat now you notice there's this hump right here that, that kind of gets in the way for me because I have the seat almost all the way back. And uh, it does have the floor mats that snap in place on this side. So it keeps it straight for you and from sliding around. There's the accelerator and brake pedal. There's also a large, very usable and much appreciated by me footrest there. Uh, also, we're going to take a look under the hood. But here's the hood latch. And you'll notice the position of it. When you close the door, it covers up that hood latch. So you don't accidentally pull the hood latch while the uh, while your vehicle's running or something down the road. Uh, if the door, you have to open the door in order to pull this latch. To open the hood, there is a secondary latch just right here in the middle. And you reach in and you push up and then you can lift it up. So it's right here. And all that, all it does is that right there. So it's a very simple uh, release. And it's a fairly heavy hood, so you will need to be prepared for that. And it requires a prop to hold it up. Here's the prop, and it's yellow, so it swings up uh, right to where that arrow is aiming. So there's no insulation on the underside of the hood. Uh, but there is some seals across, a uh, little bit on the front there, and then on the front of the hood and then there in the back on the firewall there's also some partially insulated firewall and some heat shielding back there as well because this is a turbocharged engine and uh, so there's quite a bit of heat being released there in the back because of the turbo and the exhaust is back there the battery is here easy to get to and it's insulated as well and you'll notice the overall engine and everything is kind of lower down. You know, it's not sticking up real high and close to the hood. Uh, so this helps out with, you know, lowering the center of gravity, which makes it more stable on the road, especially with cornering. And there's plenty of, you know, air, volume of air that can flow through and um, airflow. So this helps out with cooling and stuff. So that turbo is right back here with the exhaust. So a lot of heat build up there in the back. Um, so the heat shielding and the insulation is mostly just for the heat, not so much for the sound. And that makes sense because they don't have it fully insulated. It's just mostly for that heat build up back there. And then of course the intake is here in the front and uh, the cooling systems up here. So it's good that the heat, the heat from the exhaust and all that stuff is not competing with the cooling systems like the radiator and uh, condenser coils, that kind of thing. So this is a front wheel drive vehicle and the, the engine is this way. So the intake, air, exhaust there, and the transmission is there kind of under the battery in that area. And it's an eight speed tri Triptronic transmission. So it's not a CVT or anything like that. And it's a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine and you know so it does a pretty decent job as far as fuel economy the acceleration is adequate um, so with that turbo it does help out with having a small displacement engine 
you know, allow you to accelerate and get in traffic. And the eight-speed transmission does a pretty decent job as well, um, you know, with delivering that power in a way that makes sense while you're driving. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. So you have your door lock buttons up here, power windows. Now all four are one touch up and down, and the back windows go right there. So almost all the way down, but not quite. The heated side mirrors are adjustable here. You just pick a side, and then you can adjust it like a little joystick. And they also have the indicators for the blind spot monitor system and rear cross traffic alert system will be right there in the side mirror. And we already saw the uh, fuel door release there. So the driver has a power seat instead of a manual like the passenger. And it has the ability to go up and down and tilt and forward and back. And you can see when I put the seat all the way back, there's lots of leg room, but you can see there that portion under the seat that raises up, a little cliff there is a little bit, can potentially get in the way sometimes. It also has a, a uh, two-way lumbar adjustment as well. To the left of the steering column, is the headlight switch so you have off automatic parking light and headlights headlights on auto, manually turn them on and there's some issues with the interior lights uh, I'll show you that in the, in the in the night video it's there's some pluses and minuses and the the pluses are purely cosmetic and the minuses are purely functional so it's weird um, tilt and a telescoping steering column and you can lock it in place there. I'm sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out, and I have the driver's seat all the way back, all the way down, and I'm six feet tall to give you an idea of the potential leg room here. I'm actually too far back, quite a bit. I can put my legs straight out, and um, yeah, it's a, it's, there's just a lot of leg room here in the front. Now, of course, you compromise the back seat room when you do this, um, but you know, if you're driving and you're a little bit over six feet tall, it should be no problem driving this vehicle. Now, of course, you can see, move the seat up and down as well. So depending on your height, you can, you know, basically height or whatever, you should be able to adjust the seat properly. So the steering wheel is a simulated leather material, uh, flat here on the bottom, has metallic accents on it, and it feels pretty good. It's not super duper soft, but it does give a little tiny bit in the hand stitch there on the inside very tight wrapping and the way that the way some portions of the steering wheel are round like down here up here it's round on this side and it's more of a sharper edge on that side so kind of feels interesting it's fine I mean it's not a uh, not it doesn't seem to be a problem and it's thicker down here as well so the buttons on the steering wheel here on the right side uh, actually, you'll see down here in the metallic portion, those are kind of connected together. So you have your volume for the radio, change through the tracks on the radio, or tracks on what you're playing, depending on whether it's Bluetooth or USB or whatever. Alright, so that's for the radio. Right above in this area is the heated steering wheel control. So that is a heated steering wheel. And voice recognition. Now these other buttons, the view and these arrows and the OK, correspond to the screen. Basically the gauges are a screen. And I'll show you that in a minute. Here on the left side is the cruise control system. You can turn it on here. The adaptive radar cruise control will initiate. If you want the lane keeping assist, you can turn that on. So this is the button for that. And um, so this will turn on also your cruise control as well. But this also enables the lane keep assist as well. So you can turn it off by pushing that button as well. So you can set, resume, uh, and right here is the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you using the radar sensor. And these buttons are to increase or decrease your speed here. Uh, sometimes vehicles will use the set and resume button to do this feature to 
for the plus and minus, but this one for some reason has a separate side to side button there. It's just a little bit something to get used to. It's not a big deal. Alright, so the windshield wiper for the front and rear controls are right there. And the turn signal's here. It also has the uh, dimmer switch for your gauges. Now there's a button here on the very end. When you push that, it pops up a shortcut to your um, safety systems. So you can turn on your adaptive cruise control or you can just have it, you know, like regular cruise control, that kind of stuff. Blind spot monitor, we can go through that quickly to show you different things that you could turn on or off. And I'm using these buttons here to interact with the screen. So up and down is pretty self-explanatory. So this is what the gauges look like. And there's different views. Now this is just one of the views. Um, but this one is the most, you know, what people are familiar with. So there's RPM tachometer there on the left side, along with the engine coolant temperature. On the right side is the fuel gauge and the speedometer, kind of traditional looking speedometer, all digitally represented on a screen. Now the, the digital speedometer is here as well as here right now. Outside temperature, digital clock, digital compass, uh, what the last speed limit sign will show up here. And the radar adaptive cruise control will give you a little indicator right here as well, real small, when you don't have it large on the screen here in the middle. And um, it shows you what you have it set at as well and what gear you have the vehicle in down here. So when we push the view button, okay, so we got the view button, we have the pages button, we have OK, and we have up and down. So those are the main buttons. Pages, OK, up and down is what I'm going to refer to them as in the view. So first, let's just change the view by pressing the view button. Now we have a more simplistic screen, just as a digital speedometer there. That's the main focal point. Push it again, adds a little bit more information. Push it again, takes us back to the original screen. So there's three different simple views. Um, and in any one of these screens, we can push the left, right pages buttons. And you'll see that that center information is part of a menu system. So we were just in the driving data uh, top menu and selected within that driving data was the digital speedometer. But we can scroll down in the driving data and we can change the view to whatever we want. So if we want to focus on the oil temperature for some reason, we can do that. Um, the trip information, fuel economy, we can have an overview of different um, information there if we'd like. The range, what's consuming the most, what's consuming energy right now, climate control. And then you go back to the speed. And that would be my default there is having this, the, the speed there. Now if we go to the pages to the right or left, it takes us out of the driving data to assist system. So this would be the radar adaptive, adaptive cruise control in the lane keep assist system. So we can have that up there. Scrolling to the right will be the navigation. Right now it's just showing a digital compass because we don't have any kind of guidance set or destination set. Audio, just whatever the radio is doing. Telephone, of course we'd have to have one connected but it'll show like, you know, like uh, somebody calling or whatever happens to show up there and this is the vehicle status just letting you know what's going on you know depending on what what particular thing needs to be said about the vehicle and then the uh, takes us back to the driving data so if you continue on it'll just start back to the beginning so this left right up and down depending on which one some you can go up and down and then to change the view uh, these buttons here and once you get it set up to the view that you want you don't have to go in there and change anything unless you really want to look at something specific like uh, you know like the transmission temperature let's say you want to see that 
you can you know scroll through and look for that uh, but generally you just drive it and you have the whatever view that you want up and um, and that's all that you see there so here is the other screen in the vehicle and it's a touch screen it also has soft touch buttons in other words touch screen buttons there on the sides and a physical volume knob and a physical tune through the stations knob which has a rubber portion on the outside so it's easy to grip and turn you can also turn your radio off by pushing that button as well uh, so right now I have the in the menu screen here so I push the menu button and this is what it shows and you have these tiles here similar to a cell phone where it has kind of like shortcuts to different things let's go ahead and start off with the radio and so it has presets there in the middle it shows you what's playing you also have like album art and stuff like that depending on what's playing also when you move your hand up here it senses your hand and pops up some stuff and uh, so that way you can act, you interact with it but when your hands not there it kind of minimizes to more of a visual informational thing uh, and then when your hand appears come getting close to the screen it'll pop up stuff that you can interact with with your hands now some of the some of this stuff could be improved I would say as far as you know the size and all that stuff uh, but um, it seems to work pretty good all right so let's go back to the menu and telephone you have to have one paired but you'll have access to your recent calls your phone book all that stuff send and receive calls uh, using the the system and navigation when we push that here's what the navigation map looks like and you can pinch zoom like so um, you can also put in destinations so let's go move this over like that and it has some you know, favorites here and then you can search for a destination you can have saved destinations here as well alright so let's go back to the menu there uh, assist systems when we push this it shows you kind of like a picture of what's going on so with the radar adaptive cruise control when we turn it on we turn that system on or off or whatever it'll kind of give us a visual of what's going on here on the screen uh, what's enabled and what's going on with the vehicle so you notice these uh, little bars right here will give you an indicator of what the vehicle set between the vi your vehicle and the one in front of you also roadside information um, is set to be displayed that kind of stuff also blind spot monitor system as well so if we hit that you can say it's active right roadside active that active you know so basically you know it's just kind of like a picture so you can visualize a little bit better instead of just if you don't know what adaptive cruise control is then it, you know kind of like visualize a little bit better all right so media this is whatever your bluetooth or whatever you have playing and the sources are AM FM satellite radio internet okay um, so this is like internet radio or whatever using your cell phone um, my media which would be you know like save stuff and then Bluetooth audio all right uh, app connect so this has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay which is pretty cool if you like those features now me personally when I'm using that is just very for a very per specific purpose I wouldn't use it all the time um, because it does have some limitations uh, so when I play music off of say like YouTube app on my cell phone then you know sometimes it interferes when I have the have it connected with Android Auto it kind of interferes with that interaction a little bit so you know I prefer just to play directly and through the Bluetooth system and use the navigation that's already here now vehicles that don't have navigation it adds that navigation capability so you know like I said it's depending on if you need navigation different things um, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are you know very very preference based and my and, and they're not the top of my preference anyway 
but it does have that capability and the fact that it's wireless is really nice as well all right so vehicle information will be right here um, so you can kind of like go through and see uh, your fuel economy and stuff like that trip computer you can adjust the sound here All right, and then over here you can adjust the good of the climbing control so it has a visual just like the car situation where it actually showed you the car and in, in, in a visual this gives you a visual of where the air is blowing whether it's synced the temperature um, and it's on manual mode instead of automatic it does have the automatic function as well um, but this is in addition to the actual buttons down here and I'll we'll go into that in a second I'll, you know also the heat of the seat controls that kind of thing All right, let's go back here. Um, you go into the setting and set up all the different things that you want to set up in the vehicle. And this is all when you first get it. You set it up the way you want it. All right, car net. This would be a something that you would have to, you know, like a cell phone app type thing that you would have to check and then roll in it. You know, it's, not, it's something that the owner would have to do. Legal notices help. This is all you know stuff that you would normally use, but uh, it's there anyway. And you'll notice that there is quick access buttons here on the outside, the soft touch buttons, so that way you can quickly go to specific things. You know, you can go to your apps, you can go to um, navigation, you can go to the radio, all that stuff. You don't have to go to the menu and then slide through and try to find it necessarily, depending on what it is. four-way flashers are there and then here's the climate control specific buttons and it has the heated seats for the driver and passenger and then where you want the air to blow recirculate the air fan speed is controlled by that center knob driver temperature passenger temperature so you can see the little temperatures there they're synced right now and they'll adjust and um, when you push the menu button it just pops up this so we saw that already uh, front and rear defrosters here and so basically the automatic setting I have it off automatic because I have to control the fan speed so I don't blow too much and make too much noise while I'm doing this video but the automatic function works pretty good you just hit the automatic you set the temperature and it kind of does its thing and it does a pretty decent job all right so down here there is a 12 volt power supply and two USB C ports, not a standard USB port. There's also a wireless charger here as well. Now, when you ch wireless charge your cell phone, you set it in there, it, there's no status light. It doesn't tell you whether it's charging down here. It pops up on the screen and it'll briefly say it's charging. Uh, but it doesn't tell you when it's fully charged. It doesn't give you any other indicators. It just basically, you know, you throw it in there and you hope for the best. Because, especially on a long trip, you kind of want to know the status of what's going on. Let's, sometimes when you use wireless chargers, it starts charging for like 30 seconds and then it starts flashing and it stops charging. And let's say you're driving and you're thinking it's charging, then, you know, it's not for, for whatever reason. Then when you get to your destination, you pick up your phone and it's, it's almost dead or something, you know. So it'd be nice to have some kind of little status light letting you know what the, actually happening when you put it down there to charge. But it is a rubberized surface and it seems to be positioned properly for pretty much any phone to put in there. But it is down here in this little cubby hole, so you know it does kind of reduce the amount of signal you can potentially get. Uh, even though you can send and receive calls using the voice recognition system, you know, you are you may not get the best signal down in this little cubby hole. Okay, so we already saw the start buttons. Here's the shifter. There's electronic parking brake. Let's go ahead and put the shifter in uh, reverse. There's a backup camera that pops up here. It also 
initiates the parking sensors as well. It has active guidelines, so as I turn the steering wheel, it'll turn those lines as well. And the shifter is able to go to neutral, drive, and then you have a sport mode. Um, so when you push it down, and it toggles sport sport mode to drive mode. And it'll, let's show you what, what gear you're in, remember? Up here, sport mode, drive mode. So S, D. Now, if you want to manually limit your gears, or shift manually, you can move it over to the right, like so, and bunch, bump it like a ratchet shifter. So it'll say manual one, manual two, um, and it'll keep you within a pretty safe range so you don't mess up the transmission so easily. Um, so it's not like full 100% control, but it does give you the ability to have some control over the shift points, basically. Or if you just need downshift, which is a very you know, common thing in, in hilly areas. So the electronic parking brake, you pull it up to initiate it. It does have a a light letting you know that it's on and it and it engages the rear wheels to re, to turn it off you hold the brake over here and push down on it and it'll release it so this is the stop start feature and when you get in the vehicle I turn it off immediately because I don't like the feature but it basically when you come to a complete stop it'll turn the engine off and then when you let go of the when you let go of the brake it'll turn it back on and you, you can go so like you're sitting at a stop sign for like one second or two seconds, it'll turn the engine off. And then it'll have to start it back up before you can go again. Um, it's intended to reduce emissions while you're sitting still. But, you know, unless you're sitting in traffic for long periods of time, it's not, it doesn't really do a whole lot other than stop and start the vehicle briefly. So that's, that's that. So cup holders are here and they have little articulating arms. I wish all cars had at least something like this because they do come in handy. Because you put a water bottle or something in here and it's wobbling around all the time while you're driving without these. So these kind of keep whatever you put in there centered and with tension on them so they're not wobbling, which I like uh, the fact that they have that. It's also open all the way to the bottom here in the center part so you can utilize the space for more than just cups. A little storage area there. Armrest is soft to the touch, a little rubbery soft, but it doesn't bottom up very. It doesn't bottom out easily, so it's pretty soft. It does. It's pretty good. Um, so this lifts up. It doesn't latch or anything, so it's just kind of like friction stays where it, wherever you put it, including at the very bottom. Um, and it does have a little spot for wires to go in and out of the compartment here. And I like the fact that it doesn't flop down on you when you lift it up. And it has a little compartment here, and it's light colored on the inside. But the very bottom is a black little carpet at the bottom. But it is a nice little pocket, and I like the fact that they have this part at least a light color. Because that helps out with seeing in here a little bit better. If it's all black, then it's really hard to see in here, especially when there's no light in here. It's a little spoiler for the, the night video. has an auto dim rear view mirror and it's actually auto dimming right now because I have the shade over the light sensor which is right back here so there's some lights and I'll tell you a spoiler for the night video as well when you want to turn on the interior lights it's because it's dark and you want to see but the button to turn on the interior lights is not lit like you, you, you can't see it so you have to like push a whole bunch of buttons up here trying to find it um, so it doesn't make any sense it's really really a bad idea to, to do that um, so you're going to turn on the rear lights the front lights independently here here uh, this and this is for the sunroof we'll get to that in a minute you also have roadside assistance buttons here as well the visor has like a vinyl covering which is good to protect it when you're touching it it's easy to clean it back off little clip there and then a mirror with a little light that turns on. Um, nothing on the other side, but it does have the ability to extend out on a plastic rod. Okay, so the sunroof. The sunroof 
uh, it blocks most of the light but you can see there's some light shining through the shade so you can see it's a big panoramic sunroof and but there's always some kind of light shining through so let's go ahead and use this button so this is for the shade this is the open up the glass so we'll push the shade button first you can see it kind of slowly goes back All right, so you can see it's massive, massive sunroof, really nice. Uh, we can go ahead and vent it by pushing up on this button, push up on this button back here, and let some airflow come in, close it, or we can slide it back. And it goes right above the fixed portion of the glass, which is back there. Pull it back again, and it goes back a little bit further. So there's a lot of open space here. Looking at the visibility there in the back, um, not bad. It does have some the pretty wide pillars in the far back, but uh, I mean, all things considered, I haven't had any issue with the visibility as far as backing up or whatever. Also, the backup camera works fine, and the parking sensors, rear cross traffic alert, and the blind spot monitor system all help out with uh, driving the vehicle safely. But really, as far as visibility in general, it's not a big deal. Now it depends on, you know, your passenger and cargo might limit this, but it looks pretty good to me overall. All right, so there you have it. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.